Hey everyone, thanks for joining the webinar today. This is Steven Stanzak from MarTech Wiz, and we'll get started in a few minutes with the high converting landing page webinars. Uh, this is a webinar that's in conjunction with PageWiz and MarTech Wiz, so we're collaborating on this and uh, really looking forward to getting started. So basically what this webinar is gonna go over is essentially landing page optimization. So we're gonna be using um, a lot of A-B tests that we found uh, throughout the web that really talk about what are high converting elements in landing pages. There's a lot of landing page content out there which talks about what are the best things to do, but they really don't back it up with proof. So what we try to do is find uh, case studies that were statistically significant case studies, and we found eight really good ones that have some interesting implications and interesting takeaways that we feel like you guys who are trying to optimize your landing page will learn some things that you can test and implement within your own landing pages. Uh, so to get started, uh, basically, as I mentioned, we're going to go over eight case studies, and they're all statistically significant data uh, that is in these, these case studies. And basically what that means is that there's a 95 plus percentage uh, confidence rating or above, which means that there's very little likelihood that chance was involved in uh, which, which variation won, A or B. Um, now, one thing to note is that these work for specific companies and specific situations, specific industries. So not necessarily everything is going to work uh, for you. So I would definitely recommend that if something is interesting to you and you think and you feel like it would make sense within your own situation, then test it. I wouldn't go and you know implement all these eight things today. Um, you really want it has to has to pass the, the pass the sniff test. Doesn't make sense. And then secondly, it's something that you really want to test first before you really implement it in 100% of your pages. Um, then after this, uh, after the eight case studies, we're going to go into a walkthrough of PageWiz, really quickly show you how easy it is to actually implement an A-B test. So PageWiz is a great landing page tool, and it's very easy to do A-B testing. It's uh, meant specifically or it's really strong suit is in performance and PPC, so connecting you know, your ads words or Google ads now, those ads to landing pages. And it's really easy to uh, to drag and drop and, um, and and edit your pages, make them look good, a lot of great templates, and then also very easy to A-B test. So we'll also go over how to do that uh, within the tool after, after we go over the case studies. So as I mentioned, this presentation is being recorded and we will send out the slides as well as the video uh, to everyone who's on the webinar. And if you have questions, we are going to be answering those towards the end of the presentation. So uh, feel free to just put them in the chat box. There's actually a specific Q&A part of the chat box, but either place you put it, we'll find those and we'll answer those at the end. So just a little bit about me. Um, I run the MarTech Wiz blog, so it's probably how you found, about, uh, found out about this webinar. I also run a meetup group in New York called MarTech NYC. So if you're in the area, we'd love to see you at a future event. Uh, I have a lot of things going on. So I'm also president of Online Geniuses, which is a digital marketing community on Slack. And in terms of consulting, I have a consultancy called On Deer Marketing, which I focus on technical consulting. So I definitely uh, know my way around landing page optimization and have done a ton of this work and uh, am happy to kind of show you and explain to you some of the, uh, some of the learnings from that work. Let's first start off with what are the fundamentals of landing page optimization? These are things that are really the core concepts and um, you can certainly go and test these if you want to, but I think these are the ones that you may, if you don't have a lot of budget, time or effort to really put into testing, these are the things that you might wanna take for granted um, and really uh, uh, just implement them up front um, because if you test every little thing, it's probably just going to be too much testing and you don't want to over test. So these are the things as a foundation I would implement for most everyone who's getting started with landing pages. But one, you want a singular focus. So this is going to be different from your homepage, which has, you know, navigations, which has many different call to actions, many different buttons and different elements that you can click on. With a landing page, you want to really simplify it so that everyone is funneled to the one call to action, uh, whether it's downloading an ebook, whether it's a free trial, whether it's a product that they're going to buy. That's really what you want is a singular focus and not have too many distractions. There's too many different things that people can do. You don't really don't want them clicking away from the landing page. You really want them to 
obviously convert. Um, so you want to really narrow down the choices and have a singular focus for the landing page. Um, secondly, on the top right, really the less form fields, the better in terms of conversions. So um, it's just common sense that if you have less fields that people need to fill out in a form, then basically that means that they're going to be more likely uh, to fill out the form. Now, certainly, if you want to add more things like phone number, like company name, um, like the name of the first pet, whatever, you can put that on there. But I would definitely test that and see how much the drop in conversions is. It might make sense if you really want to have um, the phone number, and that's really important to you, it might make sense to have a slightly lower conversion rate to get that additional information. The next thing is clear, concise, and compelling headlines. Um, headlines are very important. It's the first thing that people see, probably that along with the image. So you really want to make sure that you test those and you get really, really good, uh, clear, direct, and concise headlines. Um, the next thing is matching the landing page and the ad together. So you're going to get the most success if the styles and the messaging is congruent and similar between your landing page and the ad. If you are sending them to the landing page from like, for example, an AdWords or any type of PPC ad. That also helps with quality score. Um, so when you're looking to optimize your AdWords, having a good quality score is often tied to how congruent those styles are. So that's something to keep in mind too. Then lastly, the call to action or the CTA, you really want that early and, and often. So what I mean by that is you want the call to action to be above the fold so people see it when they log on to the page and when the page loads without having to scroll down. And you also want the CTA sprinkled in several times throughout the landing page. So uh, you really maximize your chances for them to convert. So we're going to start off now with a little poll uh, to get a sense of the people who are on the webinar. What, are, what is the typical offering of your landing pages? So let me go and make this poll live. Publish it. So you should see the poll, I believe, in your chat box. I have a slightly different screen. But basically, the question is, what is a typical offer of your landing pages? So we want to know kind of uh, what the audience is for the webinar. So it would be good to get a sense of what are you looking to do with your web webinar. And even if it's a paid product, ultimately, we really want to know what is the offer of your landing page. So is it a free digital product like an ebook? Is it a paid digital product? like maybe a paid course, uh, maybe it's a free trial offered for like a SaaS product, maybe it's a physical product or other if it doesn't fall into any of those other four buckets. Okay, we'll give a few more seconds here. Okay, so it seems like interesting, not exactly what I expected, but this is, this, this is good. So the final results, I'm not sure if I can pub, pub, publish this, but it's basically 50% a uh, free trial, 25% physical product, and then 25% other. So it's a good kind of cross section of uh, different offerings for your landing pages. And that will help me as I go forward. And uh, then we got uh, a couple of people also who have a free digital product like an ebook. So it's kind of pretty much spread across the board. Okay, so let's go now into the case studies, the landing page automation case studies. This is really the core of the presentation and some things that you can potentially implement within your landing page to increase uh, conversions. So the first case study, this is a company that does uh, assessment software for basically education. So in this example, their first landing page was uh, in, in the control had a form on the page. And you can see there, it's a fairly long form where it's asking several different questions. And what they wanted to do was test how different would the conversion rates be if we instead have a form that pops up on click, also known as a modal pop-up form. So this means instead of having the form, which can be large, sometimes ugly on the page and take up a lot of real estate, instead just have a single button. And when someone clicks on that button, the form pops up, as you can see on the right, in a separate window. Um, so this was really interesting to see uh, the results here. And um, you can kind of take a guess at which one before we go on to the next slide. But the thing is, you know, you got to have a form in almost any landing page builder. So that's something that, 
you know, when you're building your landing pages, the biggest thing is you want to make sure that they have a form. So what was the end result? Well, this is actually the biggest uh, increase in conversions out of any case study. So I wanted to start with this one. There's actually a 633% lift in conversion rates when they switch to the form that pops up on a click. So what does this say? What, what can we really take away? What are we learning from um, some possible reasons why that's the case? Well, probably one of the main reasons and one of the important things is that you want to make the first step as easy as possible. With landing page optimizations, it's really important to get the momentum going. So instead of having someone, it's a pretty big request to ask someone to fill out a form with, you know, it looked like six to seven, eight questions. There's um, different things like filling out phone number. There's different uh, radio buttons that they have to push, et cetera. So in this, they basically just had to click one button and then the form popped up. And even though it's an additional step, that micro conversion and clicking the button for the one time to draw up the form was really a micro conversion that created an easy first step. So it started the momentum for people who are going to eventually convert. Um, so those micro conversions really uh, ha, um, um, give some skin in the game for the people who are watching and, video and visiting the landing page. Um, there's also some added benefits to splitting up the page on a modal versus just on the, on the, uh, the, the form on the page itself. So basically, when you split that up, um, then you get better analytics. So when it's split up, now you're going to know how many people clicked on the button and saw the form versus how many people just didn't click at all. So then you're going to get a sense of who are the people who saw the page but didn't feel like it was necessary even to click the button. But then you're also going to get information on who clicked the button, saw the form, but then didn't fill out the form. So for those people, for example, you can ascertain that they were interested in the offer but then they saw the form and then they felt like it was too much to um, fill out the form. But those people who didn't click at all, you can say, well, they probably weren't even interested in the offer because they didn't even click on the assessment button in the first place to take that small micro step. Okay, so the second case study um, actually looks at something that you can have an alternative to a form. So what some people are doing now in terms of landing pages is instead of having a form where people typically register, maybe create an account through a, an email, um, you can also try doing it through a social login. So these are third party networks. You've probably seen them like typically it's Facebook, Google, or Twitter, where you can, um, with a one click, as long as you're signed into that third party network, you can basically sign on um, and log in um, to whatever the offer is in the landing pages, um, right there, right then and there. Um, so, you know, the question is, you may love these, you may hate them, but the question is, is how did they perform? Uh, so with these, the, the result was actually uh, a very nice and a 52% increase in conversions. So the social login in this case increased conversions from 52% versus just having a regular email form. So why was this the case? Well, typically social logins, they're going to really simplify the registration and login process. Um, you only need to click uh, click the button once. You don't need to add your email address. So if you're already logged in, it's just a one-click process. And if you're not, it's easier just to put in your password potentially for one of your um, social networks than to give your email. Now, um, it could also... Um, one of the theories is that it also brings more attention. So instead of a form field, which are just typically white boxes, instead with the social logins, you have brightly colored boxes. They have logos of well-known social networks. So therefore, there's probably a greater chance of it catching and bringing in the eye versus just a regular form. Um, now, an added bonus is that if you do implement social logins, and this is always changing with you know, GD, GDPR and, and, and with Cambridge Analytica and all the things that are going on, but you will get some additional profile information. Um, so you might get lo lo location of that person you signed in, interest. Um, you also will get typically, now Twitter doesn't provide this, but you also get a verified email. So instead of your landing page, they may put in a, a junk email. They might put in the correct Email, you don't have to worry about that with social login because they're using an email that's using with Facebook or Google. So, of course, that's going to be a verified email um, that you get if they do provide that. 
So there are a lot of benefits. And if you think that this would potentially make sense for whatever your offer is, then I would definitely recommend you uh, testing this out. Okay, number three, we go into stock photos versus real photos or original photos. So in this example, this is actually a driving academy. The examples don't, uh, the situations don't matter too much. I think this would really uh, apply to a wide variety of industries. But they were looking at what's going to be the difference on our homepage. It wasn't, con it was converting okay, but it wasn't converting as well as they hoped so. So they said, what if we actually use real photos of real drivers who are going through our trucking courses and see if that has an effect? Um, so that's what they did. Uh, so the left is just a generic stock photo um, that they purchased through a stock photo provider. And the right is actually a picture of one of their students who went to 160 Driving Academy, uh, a real student. And they were a little worried about putting it on at first because for example, his uh, his shirt says Florida on it, so they were worried that maybe they might get pigeonholed and people think they're only available in that one state. So there were some concerns with it, but they went but they went ahead and uh, tested it, and 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 you know they wanted to see if this is going to make a difference in conversions. So what was the result? Before we get to that, we're going to have a poll. I forgot about this, but we have a poll that uh, that we knew and. Uh, we want to kind of put this out to people and first see, let me, pull this up. Reset that, okay, here we go. All right, so just want to get a sense of uh, if people are using only original photos, only stock photos on their landing pages and online campaigns, or both original and stock. So I want to get a sense of what people are currently using now, and then we'll get to uh, keep you in suspense in terms of the final uh, tally. So are you using original photos or stock photos for your online campaigns? Okay, so it seems pretty clear almost all the participants are using both original and stock. Um, so that's great. So you're using some originals because as you'll see when we switch to the results is that the real photos or the original photos actually increase conversions a significant amount. Um, 161% um, increase in conversions click-throughs on the landing page. So I guess the uh, question is, you know, uh, why is this the case? Well, firstly, um, there's some advantages of using your own photos because they can have branding in them. As we mentioned, you can see the 160 Driving Academy logo in the back. You can't do that with a stock photo. A stock photo is, you know, you can add it to the stock photo, but stock photos obviously will not have your logo in them. Even though stock photos are generally gonna be very uh, high quality, much more high quality than your original photos, they lack authenticity and also we, we become almost blind to them. We've all been on sites where they look, you know, there's too many stock photos and it looks like people who are having, you know, they're too happy at work or just really something's off. Um, and that's what you get with uh, generic stock photos a lot of the time. Now, I use stock photos, everyone uses stock photos. There's definitely uh, places to use them, but I would definitely recommend on your landing pages to test using original photos. Um, and a big thing is takeaway number three is because really they also, um, they're authentic and authenticity breeds trust and trust and social proof as you as you'll see throughout these case studies is really a big part of landing page optimization so um, people want to know who who's behind the company who are the customers who are the employees um, maybe what the office looks like and all of these real photos that you can use in your landing pages and really throughout your website I would recommend that and you can see that the proof is in the pudding because in this case um, there was a significant increase in terms of 161%. And you don't really have to stop at just um, photos. This can also be uh, screenshots. This can also be, so I just wanna check the chat one second. This can also be screenshots. Um, this could be custom graphics. So um, just I would also I, I, would, I would try to sprinkle different things besides just um, it's easy to rely on stock photos because they're easy to find. It's easy to search for them, uh, but you might get some better conversions with some more customized images and graphics. OK, so number four, this is an interesting one where um, 
I'm not sure how to pronounce this company actually, Equid. It's an online uh, e-commerce store, like a Shopify competitor. Um, so this is a little different because this is taking some through, someone through a process. So it's a little bit more of a complex um, landing page. But I think there are some interesting takeaways from this. And this is in using a progress indicator. So basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to take someone through a process of creating an account, opening up a store, promoting the store, and then ultimately the last step is um, engaging in some type of paid upgrade. So you can get a free account, but then once they go through the whole wizard, through the whole process, the last step is a paid upgrade. So on the left, you see when they started, they only had, it's hard to see, but that 0% in green was the only kind of progress indicator they had. On the right, they switched up and they added um, little check boxes and tabs to each step, and they actually added a paid option at the very end. So what they wanted to do was make it more clear in terms of what were the overall steps in the process to go from start to finish. And in any conversions um, kind of process, there's always going to be a lot of steps from start to finish. So every little improvement that you can make, obviously, to get people to continue, to, to continue on from step to step is going to be a huge increase in your overall um, conversion rate. Um, so some interesting things that, I, things that I thought about this. One thing that they changed was everyone can do, instead of starting someone off at zero, because when you click into a landing page and you start a process, you're really not at zero anymore. You started somewhere. So they actually started people off when they got to that same spot at 15%. So now when someone's saying, okay, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm actually already have some progress made. I'm 15% of the way through. So therefore, I know that um, you know, I don't want to um, waste any of the progress that I made thus far. So they're less likely to kind of click off. Um, another interesting thing about this, too, is that it takes them through like a step by step wizard. So then basically what you can see that is then you can see that um, that once I take them through the whole process, then at the end, there's a paid upgrade. Um, and the end result, as you can see on the next slide, was he actually had a 21% increase, not in just click conversions, just talking about 21 increase, 21% increase in paid subscriber upgrades. So that's a significant increase in uh, revenue, not just clicks, which most of these um, case studies, that's, that's what they're measuring. So um, some of the most important things is don't forget to count the steps. Um, that's the one is already taken and kind of mark that as progress because that will encourage people to basically uh, continue on through the process. Um, it creates a sense of momentum, which is really important in landing pages and encourages them to continue throughout the process. Um, and then kind of as I mentioned before, having a wizard or multiple steps and showing them that they haven't gone through all steps is a way to let them know about your full offering. So maybe they just came for a free ebook or a free trial, but obviously the end goal is to, uh, at the end of the road to get them to pay for some type of product or service. So when you take someone, someone through a wizard and they can't go through the whole 100% until they at least were educated on what the paid upgrade is, then you're just, uh, then you're just naturally going to get more people to see the offer and you're going to get a certain percentage and more than you would otherwise who are going to go for that paid upgrade. Um, another important thing to note is that you don't need to just have a progress bar on the landing page. You can also have these on a pop-up form. You might have seen forms pop up and they say like, oh, you're, you're halfway through, you're 33% through now that you're starting to fill out the form. Um, and those in every study that I've seen have really improved um, significantly uh, conversion rates. So that's something that basically you can... Um, you, you can uh, basically, you know, uh, do that and it, and it can be really, uh, really impactful on the people who are filling out your landing page forms. The other thing, you can also put this on the thank you page. So maybe they got the free trial or something and maybe you can say, hey, you're 50% away. Maybe you have like an educational program, being an expert in X, Y, Z and to get to 100%, maybe they have to take your course or whatever. So there's different ways you can use progress indicators, not just the landing page, but also in a form or also on the thank you page and maybe even in the email update uh, or the email kind of um, follow up that you send afterwards too is something that might be interesting. All right, case study five. So this we're going to look at regular icons versus trust badges. 
Um, in this example, this is a company that was selling construction courses uh, for construction jobs, like certifications. And on the left, they had a page which seems pretty similar to a lot that I've seen, where they have icons that basically say the who, what, where of what their offering is. Um, and these are fine, they're standard. You see these in a lot of different cases. Um, but the thing is, um, when we're doing online interactions, you don't get a lot of that, those trust factors that you get in face-to-face -face, um, conversations, interactions. You don't get to see someone, what, what the environment someone's in. You don't get to see the demeanor of the employees. Um, there's so many of these trust factors that we subconsciously um, weigh when we're in face-to-face -face interactions that you get don't get online. And this company realized that, so then they decided to add trust badges. So they kept the icons, they just moved them down a little bit and added three trust badges on top. So these were things that were like money back guarantee. They just, um, they just outlined that it's a recognized certificate um, really across, uh, across the country. And very simple, just adding really a couple more icons, but one that really speak to trust. So this is, of course, a classic technique, um, garnering trust through trust badges. But the question is, does it actually work? Well, for them, it did. It led to a 32% increase in conversions. And uh, the reason is because those trust badges, they recreated some of the trust that was lacking in um, the online interaction. So fairly simple change. Um, but what was the interesting part about this is not only increased conversions on that first click to get them to the next step, it actually increased conversions throughout the whole process down the line, even though no changes were made on those future pages in the funnel. So, um, so that's something to keep in mind that when you're garnering trust, through different ways. And we'll talk about this more later on in uh, case study number eight too, um, is that it really has lasting effects throughout the whole process. So that's something that you can easily add and you can easily test in your landing pages. So in your landing page builder, for example, PageWiz, who we're partnering with for this webinar, this is something that we're gonna go through later, a walkthrough and show you exactly how to do an A-B test with trust badges. It's super simple and uh, PageWiz has a lot of inspiration in terms of uh, landing pages and templates and it's very easy to drag and drop to really get everything exactly how you want it. And if you wanna, like we did in the last example or like they did in the last example, add a row of trust badges or if you wanna implement a lot of these different changes, it's super easy. So again, uh, we will do a live walkthrough of exactly how easy it is to do that. It really takes just a few minutes to create a new variant and to start A-B testing. So I just want to let you know that it's not really super complex or difficult to get started because a lot of these landing page tools like PageWiz have made it super easy. Okay, so case study six is uh, it's an interesting one. This is a this is um, a company that um, is selling, um, they, they sell glasses for a long time. It's called Felix and Iris. But this is a new part of their business where if you're familiar with Warby Parker, it's kind of like that where they sell glasses online and then uh, they, they, they send you frames you can try that you get through the mail. Uh, so you actually get that box on the right with four frames to try at a time. Then you send the ones you don't want back and there's no store involved. It's completely done online. So on the control image on the left, they had a very nice hero image. You say it's very good um, design. Um, a hero image or someone using the product. I mean, this is standard things that people tell you to really do in e-commerce, but they felt like it was working okay, but that it really wasn't kind of getting the message across because this is kind of a new model that still people didn't exactly know how this kind of buy glasses on online model worked. So what they did was, um, you know, and this also goes to like the, um, instead of using more of a generic stock photo, and that may not even be a stock photo, but it kind of has that feel. Then they wanted to do a test and uh, they create a whole new different page on the right. So this is really different in that it creates, um, you know, they take out the nice picture with the model wearing glasses and just have the basic cardboard box. So very simple, very direct. This is what you're gonna get. And this is how it works. They have three bullet points on the left and they very simply and directly tell you what the program is, how it works, and then just use a call to action after that. Um, so it's a hero image versus having very simple and direct, non-sexy steps about what the process is and the cardboard box. It's just a concrete um, example of what the actual service is. So they saw a nice 
jump in 72% in conversions from that change. So the takeaways here are really be simple and direct in the description of your offer. Um, really don't go too high level. I was at a conference uh, the other week, actually MarTech conference in Boston. It seemed like every booth, every person I go up to and talk to their company, they describe it in such high level terms. And we have all heard this in terms of, you know, calling something, uh, you know, just throwing in these buzz terms and, and, bearing, and, and, and using very high level adjectives and nouns. And at the end of the day, you don't know what they do. Um, and I think us marketers fall uh, victim to that sometimes because we know our product, we're so close to it that often you don't think about it from someone else's perspective and you want to use it in the most um, kind of overarching terms and, and use buzzwords and buzzwords to, to, to really uh, uh, communicate and describe the full offering of your product. But oftentimes you have to peel things away and just get to what is the product and what is the offering. And this is a really stark example where this really helped them out by just being simple and direct, um, not having things too flowery, just having a picture of the cardboard box and the process steps, and it worked well. Okay, number seven. This is kind of an old school example, but I felt like it had some interesting takeaways, so I wanted to include it in there. Um, you see a long form sales letter, which is a landing page template. You don't see a lot these days, but you still see it every now and again. Even though it's ugly, these have worked very well over time. Um, but this specific this is an exercise company. It's like an exercise information product. They wanted to test. And this is interesting, not not just adding a video to the long form sales letter, which I think most people would do, but saying take away all the text and just put a video by itself, a video and a button. So they tested that and they actually had a third variant, which was the copy and the video, which did poorly. Um, so the best variation was not surprisingly just the video. So when they had the video, this was something that really increased conversions by 46%. And the question is why? Uh, what are some hypotheses in terms of why this was? Well, one, um, it's probably intriguing to a visitor uh, to click through because there's less text. When you have a long form sales letter, you're really trying to explain every different which way that they should convert and they should click. So it really takes all the intrigue, all the suspense out of it because you're basically giving them all the information there. Um, so they may be less likely to click through because there's less of a um, enticement or a mystery. Um, but also what they did was interesting. They actually, and I think this is important if you do uh, implement this, they embedded a call to action within the video itself. So it wasn't just a video and then a button, but the video itself um, had, had it, one, it talked about one out of eight ab exercises so it kind of tease that this is this is some good educational value here but there's seven more if you basically go to the next step and also it mentioned that 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 to click on the button and to convert and that they explicitly said that in the video um and they saw that that worked a lot better um in terms of the video so that's something that definitely you might want to have just a very simple landing page with only a video and see if that converts with very little to really no text outside of that and see if that might lead to um, increased conversions um, because it definitely worked uh, for this company and I'm sure they're happy to get rid of that landing page on the left which is really ugly and, uh, and get something that was a little bit more uh, sleek. Okay, so our final case study, and then we're going to go next into a walkthrough. But in terms of the case study, the last one we do is for Kiva. I believe it's like a nonprofit where it's like a um, crowd, crowd, crowdfunding, but more for like a Kickstarter, but for good, good causes essentially. Um, so on the left, they had basically like a traditional informative landing page. Like, what do they do? What is it all about? And um, pretty standard, and it was doing okay. But it wasn't, it wasn't converting in terms of how well that they wanted it to do. So what did they do here? Well, they added social proof. So basically, you can see on the right, they added a bunch of things to the bottom of the page in a box. And they added um, statistics about the size of the community and about the results. They added um, quotes and testimonials. They added uh, different logos from press that they've got. Um, as well as he added a uh, FAQ section, which isn't really social proof, but maybe it just um, addresses some of the kind of 
common questions that people have, so then they're more likely to go through with uh, the process. So um, this, this is a lot to add on to a page. So it did increase conversions, but it was actually the lowest one out of all the different case studies. So it increased it by 12%, which is not bad. Um, and um, they probably did that because of the social proof, because they're, 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 they're providing really good uh, tangible ways that people can see that if I work with you, then um, more likely have uh, feel comfortable that we're going to have success because you've had success in the past. You've gotten good mentions in the press. You've testimonials from success from successful members of your organization, et cetera. Now, I might also want to test um, if they would get a bigger increase if I were them by maybe not having so much on the page and so much social proof in kind of one place. Um, so, so that's something also to test. Um, but one thing that I liked is that they did have like a highlighted section. So if you go, if, if you see on the right that, that box, it does have the social proof. It really kind of pops out of the page because it's a different background color. Um, it has a call to action in there. So I can see why it did increase um, conversions and do well that way. Okay. So. Here are some of my final thoughts in terms of, before we get into the walkthrough, but in terms of the landing pages, um, I think one is really to communicate simply and, and uh, directly. And this goes to, uh, speaks to the Felix and Iris example where they're just telling you exactly uh, what the program is and not using too high level terms, just get to the point. What does it do? Um, secondly, gain trust. So this gets to a couple of the case studies that we went over in terms of using real original photos could lead to more authenticity. Um, also having uh, badges and um, social proof is also something that can really gain trust, which we're gonna just naturally gonna be lacking in an online um, interaction versus, uh, versus, um, and, uh, versus a face-to-face -face interaction. And then building momentum is really huge. You can, you can build small micro conversions, whether it's just clicking a button to pop up a form, whether it's showing someone that they're already starting at 15%, not starting at 0%. Those are some ways you can small, um, in small ways, but in really significant ways, build momentum. Getting someone to go to the next step and really increasing those rates from step to step are gonna really uh, uh, hugely impact your overall conversion rate. So any small change, within the uptick can really have really big, uh, really big um, increase in your results. And then of course, test, you know, uh, test, test, test. You know, not all these things may work for your industry, for your company, but these are all things that you can do and that you can basically, um, you know, start and get these up and running. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, shortly show you basically how to get up and running, and how easy it is to do an A-B test. Uh, you might not be familiar with how easy it is. So let me switch screens. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, um, you can certainly put them in the right uh, box, but I'm gonna, um, and we'll answer questions after uh, the walkthrough. Let me share my screen. Okay, so in here, um, this now we're in PageWiz, and we're gonna go through how to create um, an A-B test within a landing page. It literally takes seconds. I mean, I'm gonna go through it, so it might take a little bit more than a few seconds, but basically you just click to create a new landing page. Um, they have hundreds of templates here that are beautifully designed by professional designers. Um, you can pick any one you like, of course. I tend to gravitate towards this one. Um, and let's just say we're doing, uh, instead of a, um, a webinar, we're gonna do like a conversions conference as a follow-up. So let's call this conversions conference 2018. And now this is gonna create the landing page and then take us to the landing page builder in the background. So I don't know if you've ever used a drag and drop landing page builder like PageWiz, but it's super easy um, to make different changes and uh, basically, you know, if you want to change text, you can just double click it right in there. Um, 
say conversion conference 2018. Um, of course, you can move everything around. If you want to change, uh, you know, the color of a call to action, for example, you can just do something like that. And let's have this be our control page. So of course we would make other changes to this in terms of the video and the agenda. But let's say this is the control page. So but what I will really mostly want to show you is how easy it is to do an A-B test like we saw in the case studies. So basically we can save this and then let's go back out to the dashboard and create uh, a test variant. So basically just go to settings, A-B testing, add variant, and then duplicate your variant A, because of course you need a B variant. And then and now we have a B variant, which is a landing page that's exactly the same as A, which we will uh, make changes to shortly. So the next step is right now it's it's sending 100% of traffic to variant A. So you can um, nicely, maybe you wanna, for us we'll just do it, we'll, we'll have 50% of traffic going to both pages. But if you wanna do it like 20 and 80, you can certainly do that as well and uh, whatever uh, your heart desires. Another thing too, you don't just have to stop at two variants. You can do as many variants as you want. Um, so you're gonna need a significant amount of traffic if you really wanna you know, have like test 10 variants and uh, you know, get enough traffic on each one. But if you do have that and that's a good fit for you, you can do that. We'll just stick with the traditional A-B testing and kind of have these go against each other. So really the last step is just to change the design. So with this, we talked a lot about social proof and adding trust badges and adding um, guarantees. So one of the ways you can add social proof is through press um, mention. So let's say our conference was mentioned in uh, the press recently. So we want to add above these regular icons, which are great. We're still going to keep them here, but we're just going to add a section above here. Test it out. See if we add some press logos, um, if that would indeed change the conversion rate. So basically, we can just drag and drop in a new section. Now let's make this uh, change the color of that background. We'll do like a black. And I'm no designer, so don't hold my design skills. Uh, but just to basically show you how this works, we can quickly add a set of Forbes logo. And let's just size that down so it fits. Do something like that, and let's add just a second, um, a second tech crunch logo. I also have to size this guy down. Yeah, whatever. Something like that. We've all seen some things. Then we can add maybe some text, say like as seen in. Now the um, you know your headings are right here. We'll do a each one heading, and maybe we'll change it to that same kind of gray color, and see how that looks. Okay, so not bad for my uh, limited design skills. Um, and basically, um, you know, you can change anything you want. You can change the color of this button if you want to, but we're just going to make it simple and have it be this one element that we're going to change. So basically, you save that. And that's it. Now 50% of your traffic is going to go to this page with the uh, press logos on them. And then if the, the really cool thing is you can switch back easily to variant A by just clicking that toggle button on top. And now you're going to get to the original variant um, rate, uh, uh, rate right here. So that's basically how you can use PageWidge um, to do an A-B test. And then you're going to see in the dashboard that we saw before what's uh, going to be the different conversion rates. So then you can create your own case study and maybe we can feature you on the next webinar. Thank you, first of all, for everyone for joining. I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation. And uh, on behalf of PageWiz and MarkTechWiz, uh, we hope to see you soon at our next webinar. Thanks so much for joining.